Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Bath High School for sectional softball action between the Wapakoneta Redskins and the Salina Bulldogs. Andy Lynch and Chris Parks joining you on a beautiful but windy afternoon here. The winner of this one on to the district round. Andy, second time these two teams have met, and their first game was a very, very good one. That's right. We brought it to you on WOSN. An extra inning affair. Wapakoneta rallied to tie it. And then in the final frame, it was a victory. Salina, a one-run win. 5-4, the final score on that one is Renee Lovett on the mound for the Wapakoneta Redskins. Nothing. Pitching to Kylie Bader for the Salina Bulldogs. Bader with a line drive into left field, gets past the left fielder. Bader's got a head of speed. She'll get into second, and she'll stand right there. A leadoff double for the Salina Bulldogs. Kylie Bader. You remember the last game, Chris, there were back-to-back -back triples to start the inning, or the first inning. Salina hit a triple, Kylie Bader, and then she ended up scoring the first run. Next inning, leadoff hitter had a triple and scored the next run. So extra base hits against Renee Lovett. Early going, a theme for this Salina team that can hit very well. Sure can. Katie Coon batting second for them. Alexis Zacharias is batting third. Kaylee Vogel fourth. Leah Rose is fifth. Katie Kerr. Cassidy Freeman, Shelby Bargy, Cassandra Williams is the Salina Bulldog lineup. This one's popped up in the infield. Carly Sammons makes the grab out there at second base. And we have one down. So the wind's swirling today. Fly balls could be a bit of an adventure this afternoon, Andy. It certainly could be between these WBL rivals and the leading home run hitter for the area stands in, Alexis Zacharias. How about 13 homers for the sophomore? She is going to be good for years to come as Alexis Zacharias. As Renee, Renee Lovett throws the first pitch ball. We'll get you the Wapakoneta defense here in just a second. Renee Lovett is pitching to Katie Sawmiller. So that's the battery right now for the Wapakoneta Redskins. That one's inside for a strike. The defense in the infield from left to right at third base is Ashley Cox. The shortstop's Amy Hume. Carly Sammons at second. Sierra Sammons playing first base. Lovett's pitched 119 innings this year. Big fly into left field. Ball's going to be dropped out there. And they're going to send the runner Bader home. And the Salina Bulldogs take a 1-0 lead. On oh, the big shot there by Alexis Zacharias is out there in left field. A little trouble there for the Wapakoneta Redskins. Elizabeth Miller is the wind. May have played with that ball a little bit. So Salina on the board, 1-0 to kick things off. Wind kind of blowing. Really just all over the place, but towards the outfield, left and center field. Zacharias on with the double, as this one is also sent into short center field. It's going to fall in. So first and second base here. Hey, what else? So line is hitting, Chris, oh. as we expected. They are. <laughs> Bringing the bats out and making noise early. They certainly are. Kaylee Vogel on first base. Alexis Zacharias is on second. Kylie Bader's already been in to score. Salina leading 1-0 in the top of the first. Just one down in the inning. Elizabeth Miller out in left field. Christy Bailey's in center. And Taylor Sutton's in right field for the Wapakoneta Redskins. Here's a ground ball to third. Step on it there. Throw over to first. Double play by... The Wapakoneta Redskins, nice work there at first base, or third base, I should say, by Ashley Cox. She fires over to Sierra Sammons for the out. So Solana gets one run, courtesy of Kylie Bader's double. She came around to score, and after a half inning in the sectional tilt, Solana won. Wapak nothing on WOSN. Bottom of one, Wapakoneta trailing 1-0. Renee Lovett, the pitcher, will lead things off for the Wapakoneta Redskins. Carly Sammons, Amy Hume, Ashley Cox, Christy Bailey, Katie Sawmiller, Stacy Miller, Taylor Sutton, Sierra Sammons. One through nine for the Wapakoneta Redskins. Got an 8-6 win over Shawnee in eight innings to get to this point. Happened last week, good game between those two teams. And that one is fouled away there by Renee Lovett for strike one, Andy. Bill Sammons was hoping it would stay fair and just hop over the bag. 
Nice little slap as Lovett enters the game with a 431 average, 44 hits on the season, second on the team only to the on-deck batter Carly Sammons, who has 53, couple doubles, couple triples for Renee, and she scored 36 runs. Pitch high to Renee Lovett. The pitcher for the Solana Bulldogs today is Katie Kerr. She is throwing to Kaylee Vogel. First baseman's Cassandra Williams. At second's Katie Kuhn. The shortstop's Kylie Bader. Leah Rose is playing third. Cassidy Freeman's in left. Alexis Zacharias in center. And Haley McGilvery is in right field for the Solana Bulldogs. Shelby Bargy is the designated hitter. See her a little bit later on in the Solana lineup. Two and one count on Renee Lovett, who's be difficult to get out there at the plate. Swings and misses at that pitch, though, two and two. Kerr got the start the first time these two teams met in that Western Buckeye League affair in Auglaize County. She was cruising along pretty well, and then Wapak started to catch up to her and get a good frame of mind, so Kylie Bader came in in relief. Three balls and two strikes now. Wapak can a 19 and 8 on the season. Salina is 19 and 3. Western Buckeye League runners up. Both teams lost to Bath in WBL play. Ground ball to short. Bader's got to hurry to first. She's going to be safe. That speed of Renee Love it out of that left batter's box is good. An infield single for her. Bader did all she could, but that has scored a single. Wapakinet has got a hit, a runner on, and Carly Sammons will step into the plate. Another left hander for. Bill Salmon's the head coach. Bader did all she could. She caught it and quickly transferred it over to her throwing hand, threw a bullet across, but couldn't get it done. Eight stolen bases on the season for Renee Lovett. Carly Salmon's in the box, has four sacrifice bunts, so trying to add to that total. She's the team's leader in average, 576 for the senior, mm. a 707 slugging percentage. Pretty good hitter. 53 hits on the season, 34 runs. 10 doubles to lead the team. All in all, great numbers. This one right down the first baseline, throw to first. Nice work by the Salina Bulldogs there. As the first baseman comes in and makes that play, Cassandra Williams throwing over to Katie Kuhn. 3-4 put out, if I'm not mistaken. That's a sacrifice. Lovett's at second with one down. And she had to decide whether she's going to field that or let it try and go foul in a split second. Williams had confidence in her arm, gets the out at first, but Sammons does her job and gets the runner into scoring position. Amy Hume, the batter now for Wapakoneta, the shortstop. Take that first pitch high for ball one. Hume's a 455 hitter on the season, 682 slugging percentage. Leads the team in RBIs with 32. Wouldn't mind adding one here. She has four home runs to lead the team as well. One ball pitch is swung on and fouled away. One and one count now. As always, it is windy here at Bath. The wind is whipping at our backs. I'm sure you can hear it during the broadcast. But a beautiful field, as always, for Coach Laura Ford and her club, and always a great host for sectionals and D3 districts next week. Look at that ball carried deep into left field, but foul, one ball and two strikes. I tell you what, that ball gets hung up there. Look out. Yeah, it's a, it's a swirling wind, like you mentioned earlier, Chris. Winner of this one goes to Miller City to take on Mommy. Number one seed coming out of their sectional. Swung on and missed a strikeout as Hume goes down swinging. There's two down. It's the first strikeout of the day there by Katie Kerr. Ashley Cox steps in, a 524 batter, 518 slugging percentage, has eight doubles to go along with 28 singles. Also is driven in 23. Kerr winds and fires, and that one almost took out Zach Bowers, our cameraman at the first base side. He was showing a little concern for the closeness, the, the fence to the first base bag there. Mm -hmm. But he was alert. And Not a whole lot of foul territory here on either no, side. It's a tight, tight foul ground. And behind home plate as well, where John Derryberry is calling the balls and strikes. And our base umpire is Richard Donnell. The one ball, one strike count to Ashley Cox. She'll take that outside. Two balls and a strike now to Ashley. Bill Sammons giving instructions down there at third base. Katie Kerr, one of the seniors on this Salina team. Leah Rose at third is another one. Go down the seniors here in a moment. Three balls and a strike 
All the Salina Bulldogs and matching sunglasses as well, too. I think that's one thing I picked out here, right, staring at the field. That. Yeah, <laughs> The white shades on. Chris would like a pair if the ladies have an extra, I think. Do you have a pair? I, I wouldn't mind taking an extra pair of sunglasses there. Kylie Bader, the senior shortstop. Cassandra Williams, senior at first. And Cassidy Williams, also a senior. So on the walk, Lovett moves up to third on the... And now over to second base. How about that? So Cox alert there as Vogel had some trouble with it back there. So the walk turns into Cox moving to second. Renee Lovitz at third. Two down and a meeting at the mound here for the Salina Bulldogs as the infielders and catcher Vogel will all meet up. So the skins threatening with two down here. And Salina doesn't seem to be too worried as they circle up <laughs> inside the circle. Just want to make sure they're all on the same page with two outs. We'll see what Christy Bailey can do. She is a 413 hitter, 573 slugging percentage, has 19 RBIs on the season, 22 singles, six doubles, three triples. So she can get it in those gaps and get it moving, and that could give Wapakoneta a lead here as they trail one to nothing. I would think so. A gap shot would play two. Good fastball by Kerr for strike one to Christy Bailey. Renee Lubbock got a single to lead things off in the first. Carly Salmon sacrificed her over to second. Amy Hume struck out, and Cox walked. She's now at second with Lovett at third. That one just missing a ball on a strike now with two down. Nice job to hold back and not offer at that offering. 27 walks on the year is all for Wapak. They are a swinging bunch. A little bit high, two balls and a strike. I tell you what, for the sectional final here, two very evenly matched teams going at it today. As we mentioned earlier, a 5-4 win for Salina in the regular season. Imagine this one's probably going to be just as close here at Bath. Wapak had to fight its way through Shawnee, as you said earlier, Chris. Salina had no trouble with St. Mary's. They faced the Rough Riders each of the last two nights and scored 40 runs to beat their Grand Lake rival. Amazing. A 22-0 win over St. Mary's in five innings in the tournament play. A couple lopsided scores defiance. Over Toledo Scott in the tournament. Looking at that on the OHSA website today, 35 nothing. Is that what it was? According to the OHSA website, a 35 nothing win defines over Toledo Scott in the tournament. And earlier Saturday, Van Wert beat Elida 20 to nine. So runs, uh, <laughs> no shortage of runs in the tournament so far. Not at all. That one's fouled back. Bath, the other sectional finalist, as they beat Van Wert mm -hmm. yesterday, right here. The home of the Wild Kittens, 10 0 in five innings. So Laura Ford's final season continues. Wapak will be right back here at Bath on Friday for the final regular season game. Salina is hoping for a Redskin win in that one so that they could share the WBL title. High pitch, but it is strike number three. So Bailey goes down. There's two strikeouts in the inning. Wapak leaves two on the base paths. And after one full from Bath High School, it's Salina one, Wapak nothing on the West Ohio Sports Network. Top of the second inning as the wind continues to blow at Bath High School. Salina will send their six, seven, eight, nine, or six, seven, eight hitters up. Katie Kirk, Cassidy Freeman, Shelby Bargy. Renee Lovett working in her second inning. That one is a bit high for ball one. Thanks Sal to the Driggs family for giving us stats from Salina and to the Salmons family for giving us the Wapakoneta numbers. It is windy. I feel like I'm at the beach. Feels like, a, feels like a beach day as Sierra Salmons gave chase to that one, but it's going to stay foul. Ball on a strike. Katie Kerr, a 447 batter on the season, 645 slugging percentage, thanks to a couple home runs and a triple. Also has 34 hits and 20 runs to her name. Two and one on the... Like change up there by Renee Lovett. It's an all salmon's right side of the infield for Wapakoneta <laughs> with the swimmer Sierra at first and Carly, the volleyball player, playing second. Both very good at softball as well for their father, head coach Bill Salmons. Certainly are. Three balls and a strike. Okay. Katie Kerr in the driver's seat, 3 1 count. Swings and misses, three balls and two strikes. She's going after that one no matter where it was. Big swing, wanted to double the lead here. Okay. Out of the here we 
3-2 offering, ground ball into the hole. It's a single for Katie Kerr. And unofficially four hits now for the Salina Bulldogs. They have their leadoff runner on again. And Cassidy Freeman will come up. She's batting in the seven hole in the Salina lineup today. No courtesy runner for Kerr, the pitcher. One through nine, the Salina, lit up. Salina lineup can hit the ball. It doesn't matter. There are just no weak spots at all in this lineup. Everyone can get on and do some damage. Freeman hits 358, a 403 slugging, and 411 on base percentage. She has 11 runs on the season, 15 hits, four doubles. Ground ball foul just past Ashley Cox there at third. So no balls and two strikes. Cole and Matt Driggs giving instructions to their runner at second or at first and the, the batter Cassidy Freeman. Two strike count, the pitch is fouled back towards the baseball field where the Bath baseball team was practicing earlier today. And we'll be back here at Bath on Friday for the Western Buckeye League track and field invitation, or yeah, meet invitation. <laughs> today it, it all starts, so over there they've got the prelims going on. Blast into right center field. This one's going to get all the way to the fence. Freeman's going to get to second. Kerr's going to try to score the throw home play at the plate. She beats it. Getting into third on the play is Cassidy Freeman. Big whack. Salina leading now 2-0 over the Wapak Redskins. 12th run batted in on the season. That is the big thing. Ground ball back to Lovett. Wise play. Gets it over to first. Looks that runner back at third. 1-3 put out. And the Wapakoneta Redskins have their first out of the inning. As Cassandra Williams will step in for the Salina Bulldogs, batting in the ninth spot. Good job by Cassie Freeman that time to really I'd love it. See how the throw was going to first and retreating back to third base. They know they still have a couple outs to get that runner home from third. Can take some patience to it as the corners are in. Ball high to Williams as Renee Lovett trying to get out of this inning without giving up any more runs. So far, a run in the first for the Salina Bulldogs. And a run here so far in the top of the second inning. Williams a 358 hitter. Has 24 hits on the season, three doubles. Look at the entire Wapakoneta <laughs> team. <laughs> That's good defense. Everyone breaking towards the plate, trying to keep that run at bay at third base. If anything, you're confusing the runner if they're taking off. <laughs> What's going on? Are they going to tackle me? <laughs> it's a 2-0 count to Williams. First base is open, so Lovett can, as you can see, can pitch around her a little bit, but then you get the top of the lineup up with Kylie Bader. Exactly. There are no easy outs in the Salina lineup. Not at all. Tries to go for the bunt, can't get it, two and one count. I like the strategy. You're up two balls and no strikes. Why not give a, another bunt to try? Try and push it down that first baseline. Look at how aggressive Wapakoneta's defense is. It'd be interesting to see if Williams tries to slap it over. Taken all the way there, three balls and a strike now. Perfect day for softball. Uh, the wind certainly is challenging, but as far as temperatures and sunshine, feels good out here. Certainly does. Great day in the middle of May here. That one's low for ball four. So Cassandra Williams has the base on balls. That's Renee Lovett's first walk of the day. And back to the top of the lineup for Kylie Bader, who had a big smack into left field right down the line her first time. Got on with a double. And she did score a run in that first inning. Let's see if Salina tries a little double steal action to make Wapakoneta either throw down or put two runners in scoring position with no, with just one batter out. Renee Lovett and Katie Sommler are on the same page there. She'll step out of the circle momentarily. Here we go, Kylie. One down, 
mother continues to shake off the signs and they're gonna have a conversation. Obviously both of them disagreeing on pitches of what they want to do. And the line of base runners and batter will go over and talk to Nicole Dricks <laughs> real quick. <laughs> Take advantage of that little timeout. <laughs> Pretty nice crowd on hand here too at Bath High School. As you'd expect, both communities supporting their teams and Today's line of baseball is just across the way to Elida, taking on old Shawnee in a sectional final as well. One strike count right now on Kylie Bader. Looking for an RBI opportunity here in the top of the second. And she hits this one into center field. Ball's gonna be caught out in center and a good strong throw into the infield. Solana can't tag at all. Nice play out there in center by Christy Bailey. There's two down. Yeah. <laughs> they held the runner. That's the big thing there. I thought, I thought for sure that Kerr was going to take off and try to score. Or excuse me, Kerr did score. Freeman there at third, but not the case. Katie Kuhn will come up now. So very big out for Wapakoneta. Solana stays put. And now with two outs, so you can just worry about the batter. And Kuhn had that pop up to Carly Sammons back in the first inning. She enters the game with a 482 batting average. Swing and a miss there. Good fastball by Lovett. Two strikes on Katie Kuhn. Force at any base for the Wapakoneta Redskins. First, not any base, but first and second, I should say. So Renee looking for maybe a big strike out here to limit the damage in the top of the second. And that one line to short trouble and nowhere to go. Kuhn on at first base. And Freeman scores, Salina leading 3 0. Wise play by Hume after it hit her. She knew she didn't have to throw across. If she does throw it at first, then the runner's probably darting from second to third, and you've just got the wheels in motion once again. So she just throws it back to the pitcher. And two run inning at least for Salina. Zacharias blast into right center field. That hits a wall on the fly. One run's going to come in for the Bulldogs. And they will hold the runner at third. It's a double for Alexis Zacharias. Andy, her second of the ball game. Another RBI for her. It's now 4 0. She hits the ball so hard. Man, Eight oh, man. doubles now on the season. Five triples, 13 home runs. Her slugging percentage goes up from 1172. She now has a couple hard hit <laughs> balls today and drives in another. That is just an unreal slugging percentage number. 1172. Yeah. Man, oh, man. Yeah, she's had a great year and she's just a sophomore. And she's a pitcher, too, so we'll see her in the circle, perhaps in future years with both pitchers, seniors graduating, Kylie Bader and Katie Kerr. Another youngster to the plate that's going to be around for a while, Kaylee Vogel, the catcher, got a single in that first inning, but did not advance to second. RBI opportunity for her with runners at second and third. And she will smack that one right past Nicole Driggs and Jason Guyver. Jason Geyser from your news now over there filming as well, too. Get out of town. He <laughs> reminds you of Stephanie Sanders when she was in that right-handed batter's box for Bath on this field. Laura Ford said, I'll, it's one of the few batters I take a few steps back for. And Vogel had that same kind of English on it. The one strike pitch is hit deep into center field. This one carrying well and pops out of the glove there of Bailey. Two runs will come in to score and play that maybe should have been caught out there. Results in two more runs for the Bulldogs. They lead now 6-0. Hard hit ball combined with a whirling wind. Not an easy play for outfielders. We've seen some trouble already here in the early going and Salina is taking advantage of it. Five runs and counting here in this second. Ninth batter to bat in the inning is Leah Rose. That wind really is blown out. A lot of those balls getting up there are carrying pretty good to the outfield. And you can bet they're moving a bit too. They're not straight shots, so. Not at all. Makes it a challenge. The sun, of course, starting to set a bit in the west. There goes Vogel to third. She'll get there on the pass ball. Standout soccer player for Salina as well. Goalkeeper? I think so. I don't remember. Name sounds familiar from maybe Gold, gold tending, or not gold tending, but sure, she'll tweet us about it and let us know. Zach Bauer's not sure either, our first base cameraman, so. 
Bentley Vogel is a <laughs> sports <laughs> report super fan. It's not goaltending. All Zach knows about is goaltending. I did say goaltending in there, but to say goal keeping. You can, you can tend the net. Is that just hockey? Yeah, it's definitely a hockey goal term. Goaltender, yeah. Two, <laughs> two and one is. <laughs> get back to action. Here's a ground ball up the middle. Throw to first. And dropped by Sammons, but they do say. Oh, okay, safe. They will say safe there. So a uh, tough inning here for the Wapakoneta Redskins. As Rose gets on, Vogel comes in to score, and it's now 7-0 Salina on the air, and Wapakoneta having a rough top half of the second inning here, Andy. Yeah, and errors have played a big part of it, keeping the inning alive for Salina. Give the Bulldogs credit for hitting it hard and making mm -hmm. tough situations for sure. That, I mean, that was a – Hume had to range up the middle to go get it, but good hustle by Leah Rose to get aboard. Swing and a miss of that first pitch there by Katie Kerr. This line of offense just continues to roll into the season and now through the tournament. So far in tournament play, they've got 29 runs hmm. through nine innings, of, or I should Less say just that. seven innings yeah. of play, excuse me. Five, five inning affair against St. Mary's. Love it, has it? Throws the first over to Sierra Sammons and the skin's finally out of the inning. But not before Salina scores six in the top of the second. And they lead now 7-0 on WOSN. Bottom of the second inning, the first pitch lined into center field. Good start for the Wapakoneta Redskins. And that base hit there by Katie Sawmiller as they try to Get back a little bit down. 7 nothing here in the bottom of the second. Saw Miller, good start. 32nd hit of the season, raising her average above 400. And we'll have a courtesy runner for the catcher checking in. Number nine is Bridget Weeks. She is a freshman. Bridget. So Bridget on to run. Send some speed in there for Katie Saw Miller. And now Stacy Miller will come to the plate as John Derryberry makes the proper adjustment. Bill Garland doing a great job running the tournament and hooking us up with some fresh water. Indeed. Very appreciative of that. Appreciative of the hospitality here at Bath and really all the sites that we do, not just for baseball and softball, but really basketball, football, all season long. I want to thank everyone that's been so great to us throughout this entire run here as we've had a really fun 2012 and 2013 school year. No question about it. We've been meeting with athletic directors here in the spring just to see how we can serve the community better. And they Indeed. say, oh, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> 0 2 count. Kerr's gotten ahead of the second batter this inning. Stacy Miller trying to get on by any means possible. Takes that one a little bit low for a ball. Stacy's hitting 406 for the season, so 64 at bats, has walked eight times, 26 big hits, including four doubles and a triple. Good eye there by Miller. Two balls, two strikes now. The skin's trying to chip away at this lead, down seven nothing here. Couple runs here or there, getting you back into the ball game. We saw that in the game last night with Wapakoneta and St. Mary's. Wapak got to that eight to one lead. St. Mary's got three runs to make it a little bit closer and had opportunities, but Wapak able to close things out and get an eight four victory to move on to the Lufton University District. I like the approach of Wapakoneta. You can tell they're not flustered. They're not concerned that they've get, they're down seven runs. Just no. want to chip away, kind of following their mentor, head coach Bill Sammons, who was our first ever John Reed Leadership Award winner for all he does for Wapakoneta, softball, assistant football coach, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and he also likes to blow things up. <laughs> He's a science teacher. And showed me how to light fire with just a couple sticks a couple years ago. Stacy Miller really battling Katie Kerr here. Saw Bruce Boley here as well, too, the Salina Athletic Director. I don't think he brought the Bulldog with him, but... I bet he'll, he's bouncing back between here and Elida to check out the baseball yeah, action Yeah, definitely. Too. Salina playing. Shawnee? Shawnee, yes. Think about that. I saw that sheet yesterday. I should have remembered that. How about an bat there by Miller? That's awesome. 
Gets a walk there. Great battle, first and second for the Wapakoneta Redskins, and nobody down. She was down 0-2 in the count, and used good patience to get all the way back. Two on, nobody out for Taylor Sutton. Take a look at her numbers, 44 at-bats on the year. Has walked six times, 14 hits, a 318 batter. And we'll have a runner. Now for Wapak is number three, comes in for Miller. That's Elizabeth Martin, the mm -hmm. flex player, left fielder. So Martin at first. Two, more, two aboard here for the Wapak and Ed Redskins as John Derryberry makes the adjustments to the lineup. and. Steve Trout was the home plate official for this, for our game the first time around between these two teams. Now John Derryberry, so a couple of long time umps. Steve Trout, a busy weekend coming up for him on Saturday, so he'll be inducted into the Ohio High School Basketball, basketball coach. Coaches Hall of Fame. Yeah. I think about that for a second. Actually, it might not be high school, it might be all of Ohio basketball. I think so, maybe. But we'll have that ceremony for you on Monday on WOSN. Want to make sure they get all the numbers right. Lots of track coming up this weekend. We mentioned WBL track Friday. You can catch it Saturday. And then NWC track from Spencerville on Saturday. We'll air it Sunday at 7 p.m. here on the West Ohio Sports Network. More district action next week, including district track, Division Three style from Spencerville. Alexa Schwartz at the plate now. Batting in the eighth spot. Taylor Sutton was... Scheduled to bat eight, hmm. but I think Wapak made a pinch hit here, so Schwartz is up and has a one ball and one strike count. She's a 389 hitter and 54 at bats. Has 21 hits, 15 of them singles, five doubles. Also has a home run. Wouldn't that be a game changer, or at least Skins. narrow that gap? Skins would love that. Cut that lead down to four here. Two and one count. Her delivers, and that one's fouled towards the Salina dugout for a two ball and two strike count. Saw Miller a single, and Stacy Miller a walk thus far in the inning with runners on first and second here. You can certainly feel the emotion and the gravity of just how big this game is between these two teams. Pitchers working a little slower, yeah. taking their time. That one almost trouble, but a nice catch. Catch made out there in left field by Cassidy Freeman. So Schwartz goes opposite way. Can't get it to fall in, though. And there is one down in our bottom of the second. And Sierra Salmon's batting in the nine spot. Come up for the Wapakoneta Redskins. Had a great freshman season in the pool, and now Sierra's getting some time with varsity. 22 at bats, has walked once. Tries the bunt, but that one's fouled away. Finish out her line, five runs scored, nine hits, all singles. So we saw the variety of she, that she likes to use, 409 hitter. One strike on her, runner still at first and second for Wapak with one down. Takes a strike throw, <laughs> takes a strike there, throw down to third. Nothing happening there. So two strikes now on Salmons. Top of the order to follow after this with Renee Lovett. Katie Sawmiller took off, was about midway between second and third base, but Bader covered the bag. It glanced off her glove, but didn't get very far. So retreating to second was Saw or the courtesy runner, Martin. Sammons continues the battle here with two strikes. It's Bridget Weeks at second. Martin is at first. I've got my courtesy runners mixed up. That one misses outside, a ball and two strikes as Wapakoneta really making Katie Kerr work here in this second inning. Yeah, and when you combine what Salina did in the top half of the second, this inning is taking its time. One and two. This one chopped back to Kerr, only play is the first. Good work there. Runners do move up to second and third, so two in scoring position on the put out. And back to the top of the lineup as Renee Lovett has a chance to help herself out with two on and two down. Had a single to lead off the bottom of the first inning. Made it all the way to third before she was stranded. The corners are in, anticipating a slap or a bunt. 
One ball on Lovett. Skins would love to get these two runners home at the very least here in this top, or bottom of the second, I should say. 103 at-bats on the season for Lovett. 109 plate appearances. Takes a ball, two balls in, no strikes. Carly Salmon's on deck if it comes back to her. Of course, Wapakoneta started the season down in Florida playing four games. Bill Salmon's has a great story about his umpire meeting before the first game. <laughs> that one fouled away. And the umpire said, now you're not from Florida, right? And Bill said, no, we're from Ohio. Okay. Don't chase foul balls. Why not, Bill says. Well, the crocodiles or some other wildlife will, will get <laughs> you. There are swamps surrounding the field. And oh, man. Wetlands. And so <laughs> that was the lesson he learned to playing softball in Florida. Strike two to love it. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Second inning. Our friend Ron Brunswick <laughs> would say, Deuce is wild right now. I was listening to him on WCSM the other day, and they hadn't had Deuce is wild till the fourth inning. He said, it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Wow. Bouncer in front. No play there, but they do have the runner in some trouble. Safe, though, as Great time. Weeks gets Weeks. back there at third. So an infield single there for Renee Lovett. And Close. Vogel had a nice dart to third. That was a tough play for Wapak to get back in safely, but Weeks sold out on it. Didn't want to get caught in a rundown as Bill Sammons instructs the freshman. Base is loaded now for Carly Sammons. Big spot for the coach's daughter here, trying to deliver. Skins down by seven, can use these runs out here in the bottom of the second. Corners are pinched in. Katie Kuhn playing her normal second base position. Kylie Bader is pretty even with the baseline at short. Ground ball, this one hit to short. Bader goes to third. Smart play. Wapak leaves them loaded up as Bader makes the play over to third. And the play over there third made nicely by Leah Rose. We've played two, Salina seven. Wapak can add a nothing on WOSN. Bulldogs back to work here in the top of the third, leading 7-0. Andy Lynch and Chris Parks with you on this afternoon's broadcast. Solana got one run in the top of the first and six in that top of the second. Tropical day here at Bath. The wind makes you feel like you're out on your deck overlooking the ocean, but then there's no ocean. Well, we got Indian Lake and Grand Lake. That's about as close as we're going to get, Andy. At the reservoir, is there water in that? Uh, yes, there is. Okay. Plenty of water. Well, there you go. We're, we're close to the reservoir. Stones throw. Back to the game, Chris. <laughs> One ball on the batter. <laughs> Cassidy Freeman, I believe. And, uh, go down through my sheet there. Yeah, Cassidy Freeman. It'll be Shelby Bargy and then Cassandra Williams, seven, eight, nine, up for the Solana Bulldogs. Cassidy doubled and scored back in that second inning. Pops this one up into short left field. And plenty of room made out there by the left fielder. Elizabeth Miller, one down. Six runs last inning for the Salina Lady Bulldogs, looking for their 20th victory of the season. They would love a chance at Bath in the district final. Bath beat them 10-0 in the regular season. A one hitter for Kimmy Reynolds. Nice backhand, Carly Sammons. Strong throw over to her sister for the out. So Carly Sammons over to Sierra Sammons. Nice play. There's two down in the top of the third. Nice ovation from the Wampak faithful sitting to our right as we're right here on the first base side right behind Matt Driggs, who's in the first base coaching box. So two down now in the inning for Cassandra Williams. Drew a walk and scored in that second inning. Wapak would level one, two, three inning here, get those bats back and going. Yeah, they allowed five batters to come to the plate in the first inning, and of course 10 in that second. There's a drive into center field. This one over the center fielder's head, Christy Bailey. And Williams will slide into second base with a two-out double. 
A walk, a double, and a run for your nine batter. That's the Salina lineup in a nutshell. Everyone can hit, everyone can score, and we're back to the top. Kylie Bader today, one for two, a double. She scored a run and flew out to center field. And she takes that one, I believe, outside for a ball. Well, maybe she called time, I that believe. That must be it. Mm -hmm. No pitch. It's called standout basketball player for Coach Brian Stetler, who has since resigned, taking an administrative position at Salina. Brown. Assistant principal, I think. Ground ball to short there. Bader is going to ground out to end the inning. So Salina leaves one on the base paths through two and a half. Salina seven and Wapakin out of nothing. Amy Hume to lead things off for Wapak. 3-4-5 due up. Hume, Ashley Cox, Christy Bailey. Not a bad 3-4-5 coming up as Wapak threatened in that bottom of the second inning, Andy, but they left the bases loaded. They threatened both innings. They've left 5-1 base here in That's the first true, two yeah. innings. That's true, yeah. So Salina's done a nice job to get out of jams. I stand corrected. You were right. Five so far left on base. Coach Salmon's probably not too happy about that right now. No, he knows that you got to convert on those opportunities against a hard-hitting team like Salina, but maybe some of the momentum swinging back towards the red side with that one, two, three inning in the top half. Three balls and no strikes to Hume here as Kerr trying to find some control. Ground ball, this one to short. Bader throws off the bag. And Hume beats it out. Boy, this Wapakoneta lineup has got some speedsters as Hume zooms down to first for the single. So she goes one for two. Bader, what a throw across. We're behind a fence, and still I kind of flinched at that one coming right at us. Nice catch by the first baseman, Freeman, to just make it a one base hit instead of a base hit and a wild throw. Ashley Cox drew a walk in that first inning. Skins runners on the base paths uh, so far in every inning thus far. One, two, and three now. Hume has 10 steals on the lead, tied in the season, tied for the team lead with Carly Sammons as a squad. Wapak has taken 59. Ground ball up the middle. That is a base hit. Hume's going to go from first to third and moving into second base wisely as Cox. Wapak threatening second and third, and nobody down. Great hustle. Turning and picking up her third base coach, diving head first in. She's spitting some of the sand out of her mouth. Just great hustle from Wapak. They are not quitting despite being down seven. And here comes Nicole Driggs out. I wonder if Kylie Bader might get the call. Indeed, she is. Yep, looks like Katie Kerr is going to finish up her day. Kylie Bader into the circle to pitch. So we'll take a break here on WOSM when we return. We'll give you Kylie's numbers here as she comes in to pitch now in the third on WOSN. Kylie Bader on the mound for the Salina Bulldogs and information we got passed to us this is the first time she's been back in the circle for a week here. Inflammation in her shoulder so she is back and good to go and Bader has had a Real strong season on the mound for the Salina Bulldogs here, Mandy. Yeah, both Bader and Kerr have seen plenty of innings this year. I think Bader is the team leader in innings. Both have similar numbers. That one gets away. Redskins get their first run. Sure do. On the pass ball, Hume's going to come in to score on the play. Moving up to third is Ashley Cox, and Wapak is on the board now, 7-1 to one in the third. So now Salina is just looking to first base, it sounds like. Nicole Driggs said, look back, but come come to first, get the out. Still a six-run deficit for Wapakoneta, but certainly getting some momentum here with a good defensive inning, and now a run and nobody out, and another runner on third. Two balls, no strikes to Christy Bailey, who struck out in the first. The Bader's going to be asked to do quite a bit of pitching here to, I would imagine, for the rest of this game, and she fires in a strike. Now three balls and a strike now. That 
One up high, ball four. First three batters for Wapakoneta have all reached base safely. First and third, still nobody down for Katie Sawmiller, who had a solid single her first time up. It's amazing the way both these teams can get runners on base. We've seen it throughout the season, the number of runs both teams have scored. 99 on the year for Wapakoneta. That's the opponents, I'm sorry. Do we have a total? 230? 230 runs on the season for Wapakoneta. They've allowed 99. Man. And Salina on the year has 225 runs in a few less games, so. Here's a ground ball up the middle, base hit, one run is in. And they will hold the runner there at third. Good strong throw, but another base hit. Katie Sawmiller gets it going. Cox will come in to score. Christy Bailey now at third. It's seven to two. Katie's two for two on the day, has now collected 20 RBIs, 27 RBIs on the season. The courtesy running runner Weeks is back in. And we'll see if the Redskins stay aggressive on the base pass, sending Weeks in the early going. Corner still pinched in for Salina. Katie Kerr, of course, has gone to shortstop, replacing Bader, who's now in the circle. Stacy Miller fouling that one away for strike one. Miller a walk in the second inning. So far, Amy Hume, Ashley Cox, Christy Bailey, Katie Saw Miller have all reached base, and Hume and Cox have scored. Still nobody down here in the bottom of the third. They've been hard hit balls for the most part, just singles, but the way Wapak smartly running the bases, they're not just going station to station. We've seen first to third. We've seen moving up on a pass ball. Just good, alert softball. Two strikes on Stacy Miller as Bader gets her sign. She'll fire and gets Miller swinging there. Solana gets the first out now, the bottom of the third. We'll see Alexis Schwartz come to the plate. Flew out to left field her first time up. Runner goes. First Let her go. Bridget Weeks will scamper on down to second base. So that takes, of course, the double play out of contention for Salina. Also, the force at second is gone. That one will miss outside. Two balls and no strikes. The Salina struggling through this bottom of the third. Wapakoneta reaping the benefits thus far. One down, second and third here. Base hit may get home, too. And this one lined into left field. It is a base hit. One run is in. Here comes the second Wapakoneta run. It's a two-run single for Alexis Schwartz. The lefty makes it a 7-4 to four ball game. What a great rip. Over the shortstop's head, placed just where it needed to be. The first four batters reach base for Wapakoneta. All four coming to score. And all of a sudden, we have a three-run ball game. So Wapak down seven, nothing at one point. Four runs here in the third. They are right back in this ball game and still batting with just one down. Four singles and a walk here in this third inning for the Redskins. We see the gap power of Salina and we see the single power. Good base running to Wapakoneta. Long way to go. The Sierra Sammons will bat, grounded out to the pitcher her first time and takes a strike. She didn't like that one, pulled her bat back, and now sits 0-1. Schwartz, the runner at first, top of the order on deck, and Renee Lovett. Ground ball to second, flip to second for one, and that's all they will get. So a little 4-6 put out there as Katie Kuhn gets it over to Katie Kerr for out number two as Sammons will be at first base on the fielder's choice. Schwartz did a nice job to run behind Katie Kuhn, so Katie wasn't quite sure where she was, if she could get the tag on the runner and then throw to first. Opted with the safe flip to second. They get the force, and second out of the inning. Renee Lovett, little bounder, throw to first, stretch. They're going to say safe. Ball dropped there by Williams, throw over to third. And Lovett will get into second base behind that, so trouble there for the Salina Bulldogs. On the let's say infield single there by Renee Lovett. She's got three hits so far. What a great effort by Williams at first, even though she dropped it. She had the full split, was stretched out as far as you could stretch, and it just glanced out of the glove. So Salina will have a meeting in the circle with the tying run coming to the plate. Who would have 
guess that after a 7-0 lead for the Solana Lady Dogs. No kidding. What a little comeback here by the Wapakoneta Redskins in the third inning. They'll send their ninth batter to the plate, and it will be Carly Sammons. Carly had a sacrifice in the first, and then that ground her to short. They made the play to third to end the inning back in the second. Just imagine if the Redskins could have cashed in any of those first two innings oh, and they left no five kidding. on base, they'd have a lead. They certainly close would. Close to it, at least. So a big opportunity here for both teams. Lots of offense in the sectional final, Division Two. No kidding. Carly Sammons will call for time. The base hit. Runners with two down would probably get home two and cut it down to one here. So Sammons looking to do that. The infield is, the outfield I should say, in pretty good on Sammons. Takes the strike. She was the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, one of the nominees as Wapakoneta's FCA Athlete of the Year, celebrated at a banquet that you've been seeing on WOSN the last couple weeks. She'll take a ball, one ball and one strike. Is that Bruce Bowley in left field with the dog? I, I can't tell. Not sure. <laughs> Doesn't look like his dog. <laughs> Ground ball through for a base hit. One runs in, and the second run is in. It's a two-run single for Carly Sammons. Bats alive and well here at Bath at 7-6. What a great inning for Wapakoneta. Six runs here in the third. Great aggressive base running by Carly, getting the second one. She saw the throw was coming home and couldn't be cut off. Give her a single and an extra base. And the Redskins are rallying down just one here in the third. Both these what time's the sun supposed to set tonight, Chris? Because <laughs> we might be here till then. Uh, hopefully not for a while. 7-6 our score. Boy, both teams a lot more runs in their first game combined. It was a 5-4 win for Salina the first time they met. We're through three innings, and both teams already 13 runs combined. And we were a little surprised that it was so low scoring that first game. It, what was it, 5 to? One heading in, or four to one, I think, heading into the sixth. Wapak rallied to tie it, sent it to extras. So it was really a slow pace. It was a rainy night, so they were trying to get through things. We see our pitchers more composed tonight and taking their time between pitches. And those bats, boy, they're enjoying the 75 degree night. No kidding. Two strikes right now on Amy Hume, who's single to start off the inning. Takes that a little bit outside. Salina so batted around in the second, and here's Wapak doing it in the third. One ball, two strikes. Ground ball, and the throw over to first. Williams has an intermit and stretches for the out there, but not before. Wapakoneta tallies six in the bottom of the third. We'll head to the fourth. It's Salina seven, and Wapak six on WOSN. Our first pitch is a strike in the top half of the fourth inning as Wapak has come storming back, Andy, down 7 nothing. They've cut it down to 1, 7 to 6. You love to see resiliency. You love to see a team not rolling over and saying, oh, we're out of it, 7 nothing. We can't get back in this one. Wapak, very calm. They took good approaches. They, didn't, they weren't first pitch swinging. They even had a walk or two mixed in there. And here we are, new softball game. Popped up in the infield, love it, makes the grab. One down, good work there as she retires Katie Kuhn. And a good job to avoid a collision by calling it out very loudly so that Sierra <laughs> Sammons relented at the last moment. And four batters, five batters in a row now, retired by the Wapakoneta Redskins. No, no, there was a double. Five out of six, though. Never mind. <laughs> Good work here by Lovett in these middle innings as this one is fouled back there. Alexa Zacharias is at the plate. She has two doubles. She has <laughs> scored a run, and she has got some pop in her bat. Both of her balls have gone deep into the outfield, Andy. We've done two Salina games, and she's had three home runs in those two games, 10 home runs otherwise, and a big swing and miss there, and she is down in the count here, 0-2. They love it, feeling pretty good on the mound here. Got some confidence back and some swagger in her step right now. 
I was at the Northmont Salina game last week and got to the game and Zacharias ran over and said, you missed my grand slam. <laughs> she, she shot it. One of 13 home runs so <laughs> far for her this season. A couple of them made the top five so far this year. Here's a liner. Nice play wow. by Hume. Throws to first for the out. Two down here in the top of the fourth. And Amy Hume is an unheralded hero for this Wapakoneta team that just plays such a good shortstop. Gets some big hits throughout the year. One of those seniors. So two quick down here in the top of the fourth. And Kaylee Vogel will come to the plate. Vogel, a single and reached on an air. Scored a run as well, too. Takes a strike. She hit it hard last time. Certainly Off did. Off the center fielder's yeah, gloves. Straight away center field, just as what Andy had mentioned. Here's a ground ball to third. Skips off of the third baseman there for the Wapakoneta Redskins. That's Ashley Cox. And on safely there is Vogel. Just such a good approach. And in her, her swing and her stance, her balance is there. Just looks like a ball player, just a freshman. So Vogel at first for Leah Rose. Rose takes a first pitch ball. It's a lot of base runners in every inning thus far. One run in the first and six in the second inning so far for them. Renee Lovett goes high on that one. Two balls, no strikes. Rose looking for her first hit of the game. They've reached on an air and a ground out so far. Nice little change up there by Lovett, two and one. And she kept it low. A lot of times those change ups stay high, but tough to reach when they're down there and your timing's all off. Two and one. The next offering is fouled away, two and two. Well, it flicks some sand, gets back to this pitching rubber. One pitch can get her out of it here, two and two. And that one's gonna be high, three balls, two strikes, and now Vogel can take off from first base with a full count and two down. Katie Kerr's on deck as the gun goes off in the background <laughs> from the Western Buckeye League meet the preliminaries. Ground ball over to third. Cox throws over to Sammons at first. And the side is retired in the top of the fourth. So back-to-back -back shutouts here in the third and fourth for the Wapakoneta Redskins. And Salina goes down. Bottom of the fourth ahead. It's Salina seven, Wapak six on WOSN. Bottom of the fourth inning, Katie Kerr back on the mound for the Salina Bulldogs. So Bader goes just that inning in the third. Kerr re-entered back into the pitching rubber here in the fourth, Andy. It wasn't even a full inning. Didn't she come in last inning? I think she replaced Kerr in the third because then she allowed some of those runs. So maybe that arm stiffness is making a difference. That's maybe short. Maybe that's what I'm thinking as well too here. So Kerr missing there. Leave two balls, no strikes on the batter, which is Christy Bailey here in the fourth inning. Certainly a tough situation when you're dealing with a pitcher with some arm struggles. Last year, mm -hmm. Lou Settlemeyer did a magnificent job managing Sammy Bullock as she's the Shawnee senior came back from her Tommy John surgery. And she was phased back in at the end of the regular season and then used during the tournament and taking them all the way to the regional. WBL trying to get team to regional again. Seems like every year Western Buckeye League's represented in that regional. Definitely. Shawnee, it seems like. Bath. Salina it's been there a couple it. times. Salina, yeah. yeah. Here's a line drive, right field, base hit. The hits keep coming. Christy Bailey's got one to lead off the fourth inning, and Wapakoneta's bats are heating up. It's a Ashley Cox now, three times aboard. And she scored last time as Bailey steps in now, I think. Five. So Bailey at first. We'll take a quick break here on WOSN. We return more of this inning coming up next.
Back to game action here in this fourth inning. Runner at second base out there is Ashley Cox, Christy Bailey with a sacrifice, and Katie Sawmiller is at the plate here. Is that tying run? Wapakoneta right out there at second with one down, Andy. Isn't it something how the tables can just turn all of a sudden and Wapakoneta's bats catch fire? Katie Samuel was in the middle of that big third inning. Scored a run, had an RBI single as well. Trying to bring in the tying run here. Who's out there in scoring position. That one taken down low. Two balls, no strikes as Katie Kerr back on the mound here for the Salina Bulldogs. Kylie Bader pitched in the third, but Inflammation may have acted up a little bit for her with her pitching shoulder, so she's back at shortstop. And 2-0 pitch is now a strike here to Saw Miller. Two singles for her today. She looks to be taking all the way there, or maybe just a very small zone she was focused in on. Katie Kerr gets the pitching assignment, looks at her wristband. As Nicole Driggs, I think it's Nicole normally calling the game. It's now three and one on Sawmiller. Chopper to short, Bader has it. She'll throw to first. Williams keeps her foot on the bag. Nice work there for two down, and Cox will move over to third. That was a good play. She has really had to stretch today to, to get some of those balls, using her range and flexibility to get the second out. And Wapak hoping not to strand another runner at third here with Stacy Miller stepping in. She's one for two. Miller got as far as second base back in that second inning. Base hit would bring home the tying run here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Great ball game thus far. 7-6 our score, Salina leading Wapak. It was a 7-0 Salina lead at one point. Wapak six runs in that third inning. Kerr's done a very nice job to work out of trouble. Stranding five base runners the first two innings. Doesn't seem phased. Used to working with runners aboard. Line drive, Miller's got a base hit, and Wapakoneta ties the game up at seven apiece. Stacy Miller on base for the second time today. Cox will score, brand new ball game. Seven all in the fourth. Just a huge swing, great job pulling that pitch, or going with the pitch, I should say, right down the third base line. And Coach Sammons is thinking about a, a new runner. Him and John Derryberry with a quick little conversation. Alexis Schwartz will step in. She had that big two-run single mm -hmm. back in the third. As we'll get a runner, I think. No, they're not going to switch things up. Okay, so Miller will stay at first base. She is going nowhere. Designated hitter today with a big RBI single. Nice work there by Stacy. We're tied up at seven. She represents now the go-ahead run at first for, as Andy mentioned, Alexis Schwartz now. mentioned earlier the resiliency of these Wapakoneta Redskins. I believe, weren't they trailing in their game against Shawnee as well too and came back? They took a lead, then they just tied at three. That's the last I knew. Okay. Ended up eight to six. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so possibly. <laughs> eight six win for Wapak to get to this point, taking down the Shawnee Indians who kind of struggled to finish off their season. It was a tough finish for the Indians who I think started the year 15-0, something to that mark. Mm -hmm. Just kind of had some trouble down the stretch. Wapakoneta got hot. Salina got hot. Big WBL win for the Salina. At Shawnee, the first Friday in May. And Salina still a chance to share the WBL title should Wapakoneta get by Bath on Friday in the final Western Buckeye League game of the season. It's the funny parts of spring. You might be eliminated from the tournament, and you can still be winning your conference tournament. Yeah, it's kind of a weird transition period in there in May. Tournament games, league games up for grabs. It's a busy time for a lot of teams in our area, and it's now 3-0 and on Alexis Schwartz with Sierra Sammons to follow. Bottom of the order has done well for Wapakoneta today. Six, seven, eight, nine batters have been on base four times. Tough pitch and she holds off, wow. The Schwartz draws the four pitch walk. She is on first. 
Stacy Miller's at second. Sierra Sammons will come to the plate as the Salina infield has a force now at any base with two down here and meeting of the minds here with the Wapak coaches and it looks like there may be a change made here for the Salina Bulldogs as well too. New and pitcher. Looks like there will be a new pitcher as well too for the Salina Bulldogs. So we're going to grab a break here. We'll let you know the change is coming up next on WOSN. Third Salina pitcher of the day to come in, and we're just in the fourth inning. It's Melanie Donovan, the freshman for the Bulldogs, wearing seven, pitching to Kaylee Vogel, and as Andy just said to me a couple seconds ago, an all-freshman battery. Kerr obviously having some walk troubles. Bader was tried for a little bit, but gave up some hits as well. We think perhaps that injury uh, acting up a little bit, so she's back at short. Kerr goes to right, and yes. Melanie Donovan, the freshman, Comes into pitch. Ground ball to third, over towards third. Little flip there by Bader over to Leah Rose. And they do get the out there. Wapak strands two, but they get that tying run across. Through four complete. We're tied at seven on WOSN. Both teams with a touchdown so far as we're tied up at seven between Salina and Bath. And an extra point, Chris. Yeah, and an extra point. Can't forget that here in the top half of the fifth inning. At one point, Salina led 7-0. Wapak, the last seven unanswered so far with six in the third, and they got one in the fourth, Andy. And a nice job by Melody Donovan, the freshman, to come in. Yeah. Tough situation, get the force out at third, and we'll see how... She does the rest of the way. Definitely a glimpse of the future for the Salina Lady Dogs with an all freshman battery. As Renee Lovett is ahead and owed Sue to Katie Kerr. We know Salina's going to be good for years to come. I mean, those two young ladies out there pitching do not look like freshmen out there playing. And Alexis Zacharias, we can't forget in center field, just a sophomore. Here's a drive into deep right center field. This one hits the top of the fence and bounds back in. Kerr speeds into second base with a leadoff double here in the top of the fifth. And good for her because been pulled twice now pitching. <laughs> As she moves to right field, but she continues to produce with her bat. A big double to lead off the inning as Salina looks to retake a lead, and Cassidy Freeman steps in. Freeman today a double. She scored a run and flown out to left. Ground ball, base hit into left field. They're going to hold up Kerr at third base. Back-to-back -back hit, Salina. In the top of the fifth, getting those bats roaring again. Freeman occur on. Corners, nobody down here. Here's Shelby Bargy. She's 0 for 2 today, but a big opportunity here with nobody out. We'll see what Nicole Driggs does. I'm sure just letting her swing away. Corners are in for Wapakoneta, and Bill Sammons wants to go for the defensive assignments, especially if they try some kind of double steal. They want to have everybody on the same page. So many times in postseason softball we see pitchers duels we see you know one-sided affairs rarely do we see this kind of offensive output from both teams but we know all season long they've both had the bats and they're coming through here yeah, they certainly are both teams seven runs as you see up on the scoreboard knew both teams could hit we also knew both teams that's pretty good pitchers Renee Lovitz had a nice year in the mound for Wapakoneta Salina a bevy of good pitchers as well too but Anything goes here in tournament play. Coach Stammons has his team all on the same page. Coach Driggs does the same. And coming back to first base is Cassidy Freeman, who's been aboard twice now. You almost think Freeman will probably try to run maybe from first to second, try to steal. And if you're Wapak, do you try to get the runner out at second? And then Kerr a chance maybe of getting home from third. There's a lot of interesting little scenarios here to open up the fifth inning. That's why both teams were huddling to figure out what they were going to do in those scenarios. Shelby Bargy takes a pitch down low for ball one. Bargy, as Andy mentioned, 0 for 2 so far. But can he race that 0 for 2 with a base hit and put her girls on top? She's ahead in the count, two balls and no strikes. Salina hasn't tried to run, obviously, so. Another fist bump over at third between Nicole Driggs and Katie Kerr. All kinds of emotion and 
energy in this one, as we expected. Two of the top four WBL programs over the years for sure. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Many times fine for that league title, if not getting it. Chopper foul on the change up. Two balls and a strike now to Shelby Bargy. You can tell Lovett really knows what kind of game she wants to pitch. Many times today she is shaking off her catcher, who is getting the, looks like getting the pitch from the dugout. But Lovett has good feel for the game, steps right back in and throws. Fly ball into It'll short left field. That is trouble. It's going to be a base hit. An RBI single for Shelby Bargy, and Salina regains that lead as Katie Kerr comes in to score from third. Three straight hits to open up the top of the fifth. Seemed like it was up there forever, didn't it? But it was <laughs> right in the perfect place, out of the reach of the shortstop. Center field was playing deep, as you have to do against these big Salina bats. And just like that, the Lady Dogs have retaken the lead. Cassandra Williams will come up, tries the bunt, but fouls that away. Not a bad idea. Runners at first and second can move them over to second and third if she puts down a successful bunt here. I didn't notice if, if Bargy was running all the way, but Freeman was. She took off. <laughs> that one's popped up. It's a long throw for Wapakoneta, but double play possibility. Another bunt try is fouled away, so quickly Freeman, or I should say, excuse me, Williams has two strikes on her. Top of the order, up next in Kylie Bader. Nobody out still here in our fifth inning. Well, you like offense, you came to the right place today to watch this on the West Ohio Sports Network. And they are, I mean, we've seen a share of errors, but the balls have been hit hard. We're not talking about bunts, 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 and infield hits. There's been. Some well-hit softballs on this Wednesday in May. Middle of May, mid-80s, can't ask for much better weather. Not at all. Off-speed pitch, strike three. Yeah, nicely done there. Williams down on the strikeout. That is the first one of the day for Renee Lovett. And that will flip us back to the top of the lineup for Kylie Bader, who was one for three today with a double and a run scored. She led off the game with that double, came around to score the first run. Been relatively quiet since. Fly ball to center and a ground out to short. First and third baseman for Wapakoneta playing inside the bags. Ground ball. Little flip to third. Skins get that out there. Amy Hume finding Ashley Cox for our third. 6-5 <laughs> put out of the day, Andy. What is it about 6-5 <laughs> put outs today? Wapak gets its first one. Just a hard hit ball to short, and <laughs> you go to third, I guess. Maybe it's more common in softball. So two down in the inning as Bader gets on on that fielder's choice for Katie Kuhn. Kuna pop out to second, pop out to the pitcher Renee Lovett, and she reached on an error in the second and scored a run. And she lines this one hard into left field for a base hit. Good strong throw home there by Elizabeth Martin. Keeps that runner at third, which is Shelby Bargy. Bader moves up to second, and Kuhn's got her first hit of the ball game. Bases loaded, two down here in the fifth. Everyone can hit for Salina, we've said it all day. And Alexis Zacharias comes to the plate with nowhere to put her. So Wapakoneta is going to oh, have to talk this over because she has hit the ball hard every time as an RBI a couple times to second and ground out to short. What a spot here for Alexis Zacharias. It be interesting to see who the Western Buckeye League player of the year is when you talk about Zacharias and her 13 homers and Kimmy Reynolds and her five perfect games. No kidding. I don't know if there's a pitcher and a batter of the year, but – if that's the case, well, their can choice they, is pretty easy. Can they share the honors? <laughs> <laughs> got Shelby Lucas with, what, yeah, 40 stolen bases and a 600 batting average? I don't know who's safe no. on the play. Had it and just couldn't quite corral it there. So Rose reaches on, I would imagine, it would probably be an error again. Yeah. So Rose on at first for Katie Kerr. 
Two hits today for her, a single and a double. She's also scored two of Salina's eight okay. runs. First one in the second, and then the go-ahead run in the fifth. Put Salina up eight to seven, but Wapakoneta answer back last half inning. Salina just three losses on the campaign. Two against the number one team in Division Four, Covington. Okay. And then one against Bath, who's also state ranked in Division Two. Wapakoneta's record 19 and 8. Three of those losses coming in Florida. They also lost to Shawnee and Salina in Western Buckeye League play. Fastball's down low. It's now, I believe, 3 and 0. To Kerr, and it is. Three balls, no strikes. Covington Bucks, number one team in Division IV. They are. Very good team. I saw them against somebody this year. <laughs> I don't remember who. Minster is going to try and give them a run for their money. The first time those two teams played was a tight one. Hey, We've got to probably go up against some of those MAC teams, I would imagine. Minster and. Yep, that'll be in the regional. The other MAC powers down there. Bremen, possibly Marion Local, though Minster's the favorite. Parkway, of course, comes to Elida. Mm hmm. So they won't. So they, they wouldn't face off till I think the state semifinals. Okay. Parkway would go north to Finley in the regional, and Crestview's out. Lincoln View, a huge win last night. Yeah, about the, the that the defending four state champs, Lincoln View beating them one nothing earlier this week. Here's a line drive to second, throw to first, double play. The Salmon Sisters hook up. <laughs> Carly over to Sierra, and Wapak is out of the inning. Head to the bottom of the sixth. Wapak a chance to get some runs as we're tied at eight here on WOSN. Wapak trying to make some noise here in this bottom of the sixth against Kylie Bader as Katie Sawmiller takes a first pitch ball. It will be Katie Sawmiller, Stacy Miller, and Alexis Schwartz. Six, seven, eight, do up. Carly Sammons is headed to the bullpen. She is warming up, so we'll see if she comes in in the seventh or if it depends on what Salina allows here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Carly started seven games as an, eh, I can't find her ERA. I'm sure it's pretty good. She's 4-0. 35 innings pitch, so she's seen her share of action. Thomas Bradley, the quick numbers there from the Wapakoneta Daily News. That's right. Wearing his Tampa Bay Rays hat. He must be a Rays fan. The Thomas Bradley hat, he says. Oh, okay, TV. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Three and one the count here. The Rays had to clear it with him, I guess. Probably. <laughs> Here's a ground ball to second. Katie Kuhn fires over to Cassandra Williams. And there is one down here in the... Bottom of the sixth. Stacy Miller, that big RBI in the fourth. Got him even closer. She's reached base twice, also struck out. What a great ball game we've had here between two of the top teams in the Western Buckeye League. Miller takes a first pitch strike. Great job by our crew, enduring the windy conditions. Ben Reif on the high pad. Zach Bowers here. Not stung by a bee today like yesterday. As far as we know, so far through six, he may get stung in the seventh. <laughs> Stacy Miller, another clutch hit. The designated hitter with a single into left field. That's so the, the go same ahead. Way run. She went last time. And she'll have a runner for her. They were saving number three for this situation. Elizabeth Martin is out. Remember last time they thought about bringing the pinch runner? They did. But I think the second time you have a pinch runner for you, I think you're done then. So they wanted to save Elizabeth for this situation? I'm There's just guessing. So speed on the base pass, <laughs> at least here for the Wapakoneta Redskins. As Alexis Schwartz will come to the plate, she's been on base twice with a single and a walk so far. That go-ahead run, all important out there at first base here. And we'll see if Miller gets aggressive on the base paths. Tries to move up at all. She'll skip off, but head back. We don't see Wapakoneta stealing on that first pitch very often. Like to get a good count in its favor. Right. 
One and one now as Bader fires that one on the outside corner. Schwartz has been aboard twice. Arby at two runs single back in the third, part of that big six run inning. Also scored, or no, she did not score the run. She was cut down. Down low, Williams is going to get into second base. There's more of that aggressive base running we talk about. Ball skips away. They are moving up. And the go-ahead run is in scoring position for Alexa Schwartz. Huge, huge run out there. Fans getting a little more vocal as well as they feel the urgency for both sides. That one fouled away near our high pod camera that Ben Reif is manning. Zach Bowers on the first base side next to us, and I believe Joe Vernick out there in center. I think it is Joe. All right. His usual seat <laughs> top of the center field wall. He's actually on scaffolding, he's not on the wall. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. Good eye by Schwartz as Bader just missing there. Really, one of that call couldn't quite get it. I just thought it'd be cool if there were, the outfield wall was like three feet wide and you had an outfielder up there who could just run. <laughs> <laughs> Line drive, left field, base knock. That's going to get to the fence. Martin's going to score the go ahead run. Schwartz has a double, and Wapak regains the lead, nine to eight in the bottom of the sixth inning. Wapak waited till the sixth inning to get its first extra base hit, and it gives them their first lead, nine to eight. What My a rip by Schwartz. Huge, huge hit there as Schwartz going opposite way. Now two hits for her, and maybe one of the biggest ones that she's had all season long, the go-ahead run. Glances foul for Sierra Sammons. Salmon so far today, a ground out, sacrifice, or a fielder's choice. She came around to score in the third and another fielder's choice in the fourth to end the inning. She's played a solid first base for the Redskins. RBI opportunity out there. There you go. Tries the bunt, but that one will foul away. So two strikes now on Sierra Salmon's. Carly Sammons back into the field of play. Let's we'll see if she tries to close this one down. Wapak will have a lead going into the seventh. All important run in. Elizabeth Williams scoring that. Thanks in part to Stacy Miller single. Now Alexa Schwartz out there at second. Wapak, I'm sure, would like to add some insurance to this. Up by one. The Salina bats, nothing, <laughs> no lead's really comfortable. So. No question about that. It'll be Cassidy Freeman, Shelby Bargy, and Cassandra Williams. So the good news for the Redskins, it is the bottom of the order. But as we've said, that bottom can hit very well. Here's a grounder in the hole. That is through. And Schwartz slides into third safely there. So moves up a base. And now on the back end. Wow. How about that? Sammons gets into second base as Bill. Sammons was saying, oh, I don't know about that, but she does get into second base. <laughs> they'll, have a, they'll have a conversation at home tonight. I can imagine. That exact play. <laughs> Two in scoring position. Aggressive base running, a good rip. And conversely, Schwartz kind of hesitated. She was between second and third, wasn't sure if she should run. And Sammons, Coach Sammons immediately said, run and get down, get here. <laughs> Sliding in with a cloud of dust at the top of the order. It's Renee Lovett. Renee, a big chance here. Takes that downstairs for a ball. She's three for four, three singles and a ground out. Also scored a run back in the third, that big six run inning. And she's done her job in the circle today. Eight runs, sure, but she's gotten out of some big jams against a very potent offense. Bulk of those Salina runs coming in that second inning where they scored six. Wapakoneta did their damage in the third, scoring six. Here's a ground ball back to Bader. She's got the runner in trouble. Good dive. And they're going to say safe. Schwartz back in. Renee Lovett at first base, courtesy of the fielder's choice. <laughs> and the Wapakoneta fans behind us are saying <laughs> thank you for that gift. Tough angle for the base umpire because he was behind the play in their correct position for runners on base. And Nicole Driggs comes out to talk to John Derryberry, and she quickly is back into the dugout. But uh, granted, we're all the way across the infield, and it's, it's tough to call. But umpire, from his view, said safe. Redskins are loaded up for Carly Sammons. Big spot for Carly, who's got one hit so far today, a walk, and a couple of fielders' choices. 
She takes the ball. Base is loaded up here. You're in a good spot if you're the Wapakoneta Redskins. Just one down in the inning. Salina needs outs here. Bader looks at her wristband, gets the pitch assignment. Pops that one out of play. And Salina fan made a great effort. At it. <laughs> he took off in a dead sprint to try and get that foul ball. Bruce Bowley still watching out there in left field. Looks like, he's, <laughs> looks like he's on the phone out there, too. Important business with the Bulldog, one and one. Oh, fights that off. Carly almost taken out her dad out there at <laughs> the third base dugout. Or the third base side, I should say. Yep. What a successful career coach Bill Sammons has had. First in Michigan coaching softball and now here at Wampakoneta. Same goes for Nicole Driggs at her alma mater. Here at Salina, she was a great player as well. Line drive, base hit into center field. One run comes in, everyone moves up a station, and Carly Sammons with a big RBI single to center field. Wapak pads their lead, they're now up 10 to eight. She hit it solidly. Good job by Alexis Zacharias to get it back in, hit the cutoff player. So Wapak couldn't get two. Lovett comes over to talk to Coach Sammons. A high five there. We've seen it all today. 10 to 8 now off the Canada. They trailed 7 0. And they've rallied off a 10 1 stretch to get in front. An impressive comeback, no doubt, here. As Salina talking things over in the infield. Their young ladies trying to rally here and get some outs. Offensive explosion this afternoon. 10 8 ball game. It's been a fun one, that, that is for sure. And it, it's far from over. We know Salina can make it up. In the top half of the seventh, Wapak trying to, they know no lead is big enough. <laughs> they want to get as many as they can here. I was here. just going to say that. They'll take as many runs yep. as they can possibly get. Infield. And then Katie Coons right in the baseline there at second. Ground ball fouled away there by Amy Hume, who's got two singles. Two out of four officially today with two runs scored. We'll have district action for you next week. I'm thinking Tuesday is probably going to be D3 softball, LCC. Okay. Still alive, maybe facing either OG or Fairview. That one's foul. Then we got some good baseball action, D3 over at UNOH. The likes of either Coldwater or LCC. Patrick Henry beat Swanton already, so the Patriots are coming back to Lima. All right. St. Not St. Henry. Who else is D3? OG. They take on Liberty Benton tonight, I believe. So the winner of that one's coming back. To third. Throw home. They'll get the out there. So good work there by Leah Rose. She finds Kaylee Vogel for the 5-2 put out. Fielder's choice there for Hume. Nothing the Redskins could do there. Ball was hit sharply. Rose hesitated, thought about tagging the bag at third, but then wouldn't have had a force at home. So she wanted to cut down the run. Ground ball to third, gets through Leah Rose. Oh, an unfortunate break for the Salina Bulldogs as Ashley Cox grounded it to her. And Wapak gets another run as Renee Lovett comes in to score. Tough break for the Salina Bulldogs. Good news if you're Wapak, they're up now three. Saw some red skin errors early in the game. And that's certainly attributed to the big inning. Wapak trying to take advantage here as well as the ninth batter comes to the plate. Second time they are close to batting around. They did it in the third. We'll try and do it here in the sixth if Christy Bailey can get aboard. Bailey down low with that pitch. Fifth time batting today. She was part of that play that ended the fifth that scored a run, but also had a runner cut down, the one, two, three, four, two. <laughs> I just like to say it. Because I'll never say it again after this game. Probably it's not. It's coming our way. Catch made at first by Cassandra Williams, but Wapak does some damage as they push three across in the bottom of the sixth. Salina needs at least three to continue in the top of the seventh. It's Wapak 11 and Salina 8 on WOSN.
Top of the seventh inning for the Salina Bulldogs. They'll send Cassidy Freeman, Shelby Bargy, and Cassandra Williams to the plate to face Renee Lovett, working with a three-run lead now in the top half, and Lovett starts off with a strike. Wapak down 7-0 at one point. They have scored 11 runs to Salina's one in that time frame. How about that? Yeah, quite a comeback by the Redskins. We saw it right immediately that next inning. They were very... Calm and composed, didn't get any runs at the bottom of the second, but still kept hitting. And bottom of the third, struck for six, then a run in the fourth, run in the fifth, and three in the sixth, and they hope that'll be enough. We know three of the four teams in the district, Defiance, a winner today over Napoleon, so there'll be three Western Buckeye League teams at the Miller City District. The winner of this one, take it on Maumee, and Defiance against Bath. Fights had a good win against Shawnee to end the regular season, so they're Bulldogs playing some stronger. good softball. They had yeah. a pitcher that was hurt and has just recently come back. Ground ball into the hole. That's through for a base hit. If you're the Bulldogs, that's what you need. Base runners. Cassidy Freeman gets things going here in the top of the seventh. Shelby Bargy had that big RBI single in the fifth inning. She'll look for another one here. Bargy one for three today so far. Ground ball back to Lovett. She'll have to throw to first, gets the out there. So the bobbled it a little bit, but a smart throw, a good play. Sierra Salmon's the grab. And there's one down while Freeman moves up to second base. Big spot for Salina with one out. Bottom of your order, Cassandra Williams, who's got a walk and a double and a strikeout stands in. If she can get aboard for Salina with one out there, turning the lineup back over. Sandra Williams, a walk double strikeout so far. Scored one of Salina's eight runs. <laughs> Swings and misses there, a ball and a strike. Wapakoneta recently went down to the Dayton Children's Hospital to visit with some kids down there, a yearly thing they do, a service project, so mm -hmm. need to put things in perspective and give back. Big strike call there, puts Wapak ahead one and two. Lovett would love a second out here. Williams though, and try to batter her way back into this count. Down one and two here with Cassidy Freeman out there at second base. Here's a ground ball to short, throw to first. Wapak gets the out there. Moving to third is Freeman, but a huge second out as Williams grounds out. Two down, and Kylie Bader will come to the plate. Sierra Salmon's at first, paying extra special attention to catch the <laughs> softball. You can see the concentration as she caught that one in the glove. Coach Driggs talking things over with her current batter, Kylie Bader, and then the on-deck hitter, too. Wapakoneta will take that chance to huddle up as well. Two outs. Salina at least trying to get the tying run perhaps to the plate here if Kylie Bader can get on. We know Carly Sammons is ready. If there'd be any trouble, she warmed up last inning, but wanting that complete game is Renee Lovett, who's carried the load all season long in the circle for Wapakoneta, trying to get into the district. Change-ups down low for ball one. Bader today, a double, a fly out, ground out, and a fielder's choice. You scored one run so far today as well. Swings and misses, one and one with two down. Great pitch, I love it. The off speed, she's kept it low. Just great placement. Wind's calmed down a little bit here in the seventh it has, inning. has, hasn't it? Only took two hours. <laughs> <laughs> the sun's setting. Maybe the wind will calm down a bit here. One and one. There's another good pitch. One and two. Renee feeling good now. A strike away from sending Wapakoneta to the district round. The season for the Redskins. Love it turns around. <laughs> Redskins know the moment they're in, don't they? Sure do. 
One and two, two down the pitch. Fouled away, good fastball. Bader gets a piece of it. Excellent shot by the senior, staying alive for Salina. And the Redskins will try again with a one and two count. On deck is Katie Kuhn, the second batter. Just missing outside, two and two. Tough to tell from our angle. We're off to the side, obviously, so we can't tell. An exact strike zone. I love it, we'll get back into the mound. It's two and two with two outs here in the top of the seventh. And that time called. Kylie Bader steps out. And Lovett will regroup in the circle. Hmm. What a good one. What a spot, two and two, and that one is fouled away. Good off speed pitch there, and Bader just gets a piece to stay alive. A pair of 19 win teams squaring off here, trying to get that magical number 20 that means a sectional title. Wapak trying to avenge an early season, or a regular season loss to Salina. Bulldogs beat him 5-4 earlier on this year. Try to get her to chase that rise ball, and it rose too quickly, made it not very appealing. So we got a full count with two outs. Three balls and two strikes, two down. Bader trying to get on base. Lovett's pitch is outside for ball four, and Salina will send the tying run to the plate with Katie Kuhn. And we know she's got some home run power. Katie with three long balls on the season, has nine doubles as well. On deck is Alexis Zacharias, so we're in a spot. First pitch taken for a strike. 11th to eight, our score in the seventh inning. In each pitch, the, you, can, you can taste the, <laughs> the intrigue. Another strike, no balls and two strikes. Lovett's thinking about every moment as she goes back out. Moves back to the pitching rubber. 0-2 pitch is popped up in the infield. Carly Sammons calls it, gloves it, and Wapakoneta is moving on to the district round with a big victory over Salina, 11-8, Andy. What an unbelievable game. You see the emotion as Bill Sammons is right in the middle, giving hugs all around. They were down 7 to nothing. Mm -hmm. Some of the fans might have been thinking, oh, this could be a run roll. But oh no, one inning later, Wapakoneta Rallied to get six. They tied it up. One run in the fourth, one in the fifth, and then three in the sixth inning. A heartbreaking loss for the Lady Dogs of Salina, who had such a great season. No doubt. 19 wins as both teams will now come together in a great show of sportsmanship. The victors and the ones who fall behind, they all link hands and will pray here at the end. Both groups led by... Coaches that were involved with FCA at Wapakoneta, Bill Sammons is, and at Salina, the Driggs's were as well before having their firstborn. But what a special game for Wapakoneta. They overcome the hurdle. They mm -hmm. come back. They beat the second-place team who could be the WBL champs if Wapak can come back to this field Friday and beat <laughs> Bath. Quite a bit of irony in that fact. But what a win for Bill Sammons and the Redskins as hugs are exchanged between both teams. Wapak is into the district semifinal against Defiance. Final score again, Wapakoneta 11 and Salina 8 as the Skins move on to the Miller City District. When we return, we'll have reaction from the victorious Wapakoneta Redskins next on WOSN. Back one final time here with Bill Sammons, the Wapakoneta Redskins winners 11 to eight today. Bill, guys down seven nothing in this game, put together a big six run third inning and then chip away a little bit more and a little bit more and 
get a victory today. What a game. Yeah, first two innings for us is really tough. I mean, we always have 95% of our runs are actually scored against us in the first inning, okay. our first two innings. And so it was, it was frustrating. I think the girls actually start playing with a chip on their shoulder when they start getting down, and I think that's what we did. And eventually the girls just took it one pitch at a time. I told the girls, just don't let your highs get too high and your lows get too low and just stay focused and even keeled, and good things are going to happen. I knew we can hit the ball. I know we can hit the ball. It's just stopping them on defense because the Lions are a great team. We played these guys eight times in four years and won one time besides they here. You know, so we always face these guys. They're a great competitive team, and, and we love each other as, a, as, as Christian brothers. But, you know, we're, we're very competitive on the field, and, and we respect Salina like crazy. But it was, it was a – it, it was a frustrating game, because I, I, but but yet the girls did a real nice job of, of resilient, being resilient. I was gonna say being very resilient, coming back to win, eleven to eight. Alexis Schwartz, the game-winning hit for you, tied up at eight. The lefty goes opposite way. What a game for her. I don't think she's pulled a ball yet. I, actually, she did pull one ball and she hit it over the fence. So, <laughs> but other than that, yeah, she she really hits the ball real well. We got eleven to twelve girls who can hit the ball, and that's a good problem to have. And we find a way to get those girls in with a DP or substitutions, and and we're really a good offensive team. And the, and the girls really do a good job of seeing the ball. And Alexis has now seen the ball like a watermelon, which is a good problem to have too. That's a great problem to have if you're, t if you're uh, in your shoes right now. Yeah. You guys also did some team bonding as well too. Went down to Jayton Children's Hospital recently here. Did that kind of bring the girls together and kind of maybe have them look outside the box a little bit? Uh, look outside the box, you hit the nail right on the head. Um, every year I like to take the girls down to Dayton's just to keep their focus because there's more important things in life than softball. And I think when you're up the plate, bases are loaded, two outs, and you're the game winning run or hit or whatever, it, the pressure's on, but that's not pressure. Pressure's being in the hospital with your life in the line. And, and when the girls saw that hand to hand, face to face, it really hit home to them. It really did. And, and, I, and I thank the Lord that we got a chance and opportunity to do that every single year because that is the number one thing the girls learn every year is, is priorities and, and staying focused. And I think that really helped us tonight. Not that this win means anything in the scheme of life, but in the scheme of them staying and keeping their priorities, it's huge. Did a great job today here. Perseverance pays off. The, the Wapakoneta Redskins victorious by a final score of 11-8. to For Zach Bowers, running camera, Ben Reif, also Joe Vernick, and Andy Lynch, I'm Chris Parks. Thanks again for joining us on the broadcast. We'll see you next time on WOSN.